Now this function, although it's very simple, is very poorly designed. And we will see all ways in which this function is poorly designed. So firstly, this function has a very poor name, f. Now, in a mathematics book, when people are defining a function, they might use a name like f or g. But we're not talking about mathematics here. We are talking about code. And code is written by programmers not only to be executed on a computer. Code is written by programmers to be readable by other programmers. And those other programmers include myself in the future, it includes my colleagues, and it includes my AI. I must make sure, just like with variables, which have to be well named, I must make sure that my function is well named. Just looking at the name of the function, it should be fairly clear to me what its purpose is. And sometimes the purpose of a function is not really clear from just the name. So typically, we also add a purpose statement that makes it very clear what the purpose of this function is. Now, our friend uh, looks at this and says, you know, what's the problem, right? It's very clear what this function does. It's very clear that it converts a given temperature C in Celsius to Fahrenheit. Well, it might be very clear to our friend, but we have to admit they're just guessing over here. Who knows how I intended to use this function? I agree that the formula is exactly the formula that is used when converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit. But there may have been a different purpose. And while in the case of this very simple function, it might be quite easy for our friend to make a correct guess, it's helpful in general to choose a good name and make the purpose very clear if necessary by adding a purpose statement. These are principles of good function design. Furthermore, here in this function, it isn't clear what type this parameter C is. What kind of data is going to be passed to this function? In these two examples, we seem to be passing integers. Later on, we might want to pass floats. This is Python. Python allows us to have variables that are dynamically typed. And this parameter c, when it is assigned the value of an argument, it could be assigned any type of object. Remember, in Python, you can assign a variable. It's just a label. You can assign it to an object of any type you like. But it's helpful, again, while designing functions well, to make it very clear what type of data those functions are expecting. That way, when somebody actually passes some data to your function, uh, other tools, not Python itself, but other supporting tools can check to see if you are passing the correct type of data. These other tools are extremely helpful when we're dealing with very complex code with lots of functions. Because sometimes at the time when you're calling those functions, you may forget as a programmer what type of data that you are supposed to pass. And if you have these other tools, then they can at least give you a warning if you give it the wrong type of data. Similarly, it would be helpful if the function told us what kind of data it was returning. Once again, people are going to use the results of our function for their calculations and it will be helpful for them to know what type of data this function is returning. And lastly, there are no test cases here. What do we mean by test cases? Well, we have just written a function. We may have written the code for that function incorrectly. If we had some test cases, this would help us in many ways, but one of the most important ways is that once we have written the code, we can check to see if it works correctly on certain inputs for which we know the correct answer. So it's a way to check to see if the code that was written is correct. This is particularly helpful when we use AI to generate 
some of the code for us. How are we going to trust the AI generated code? Well, we're going to see two ways. One, we will learn to read the AI generated code. So we will have to stare at it very carefully and critique it. But the other way we can uh, check the AI generated code is we can simply run the function on some test cases for which we know the answer on certain inputs and we can confirm if the AI generated code produces those answers. If it doesn't, there's a mistake in the AI generated code. We may not know precisely where the error is, but it's helpful to write good test cases. In fact, long before generative AI, software developers knew the value of writing test cases even before writing the code. This is something called test-driven development. Google it to find out more.